This video was brought to you by Yu-Gi-Oh! Mint.com. Check out their selection of over 20,000 cards and prices better than TCG Player. All right, what is up, YouTube? I'm Clifford here, um, making a, well, a, a Monarch discussion slash deck profile um, slash wanting to ask uh, opinions on card choices. Um, I also wanted you guys to finish checking out the Crusaders of Lornia Kickstarter. Um, I believe it ends in 24 hours. Um, they're trying to get into their stretch goals now, uh, but the game did get funded for those of you that did help out with it. I do greatly appreciate that, um, and it's a really big help to get another card game off the ground. So, the link to that will be in the description. You guys should definitely check out Forever After Collectibles, Yu-Gi-Oh! Mint. Uh, definitely be pretty cool if you guys did. So, Monarchs. Um, you guys know I did top a regional with this. Um, last month, Fort Wayne Regional. I think it was, what, 200, uh, 300 people in the long run. Um, I did test this deck locals. I went 3-2 last week, um, which is going to lead into some sub-discussion points in this video about some things that I'm interested in changing, and I wanted to just get a general consensus from the viewer base on, um, those choices and what you guys think going into Monarchs in this format. So, I'll uh, go into the deck profile here. Um, not really anything if at all has changed uh, from the last one, but this video is more or less for discussion purposes. So, uh, Triple Aether, um, Triple Erebus, uh, still pff, some of the best stuff in the deck. Uh, three of the little white guy, three of the little black guy, uh, one Mega Thestalos, and two Karaz, and two Valor. Now, a few things here. Um, I do have a really, really trash matchup against Burning Abyss. Uh, Farfa is troublesome. Um, against Cosmo, you'll do fine. Um, you shouldn't have any problem with that matchup, uh, strictly because Monarch Storm 4th. Um, let you move their big ship out of the way, and honestly, unless they have the Kaiser lock on you uh, with one monster, you shouldn't have a problem. Um, looking at your matchup against BA, though, um, you you have this card in your main deck. I'm not playing an extra still. So, I mean, honestly, you if you want to go first and you don't open up enough bricks to build a house, you have Dominion. Um, I kind of want to play a Majesty Fiend in here. Um, also, people keep telling me to cut the Veilers for Maxis, um, but honestly, having this to stop uh, Speeder a Teratop turn 1 or a Tour Guide is pretty fucking good. I mean, yeah, it's shit against Cosmo, and it's pretty good in the Monarch Mirror um, if you draw it against uh, the Squire. So I'm indifferent on this. I mean, yeah, my opponent can push through the Maxi and OTK me, yeah. That's fine and dandy. I mean, I'm not citing Battle Fader, and I think that might be another one of my problems, um, considering that. Uh, but definitely considering possibly dropping a Karaz for one Majesty's Fiend. I mean, most of the time I already board out Karaz, um, so definitely having one in the main deck and one Karaz, one Majesty doesn't seem like a bad idea. Um, Mega Thestalis has been okay. I mean, maybe I could cut it for another Majesty Fiend. Uh, but having that ability to look at your opponent's hand turn one is pretty good. Um, Valor for Max C, though, is something else that is just a community trend at the moment. But I still feel that this stopping your opponent's play, um, if you get this in your first five, is pretty good. Yeah, drawing more resources is good, but um, it's just something else. Also, with Red Layer being considered now, too, um, I mean, yeah, you can play Red Layer with three uh, return to get your engine going. Uh, but I think you're clogging down the deck a little bit too much um, with unneeded cards, especially with Red Lair. Um, typically, you won't break as hard as you do, but that's uh, just something to consider. Uh, definitely probably going to switch out a Karaz for a Majesty. Um, what are you guys thinking there? Um, as for spells, Triple Domain, uh, it's, it's good against BA. It's going to be good against uh, Pepe uh, when it comes back post-Shiv. I mean... You just use this card against Cosmos to make your bad hands a little bit better. Um, triple, it's a prank, bro. Triple Tenacity. Triple Stormforth. Uh, this card's not really that good against BA. I mean, yeah, tripping off of Beatrice is kind of cute, but so that's all it'll get you. Uh, two of this, um, it's definitely not bad. 
I, I don't think you need three. Um, return. So, this card is good against Cosmo because they can't interrupt your big, sh or big monarchs. And it helps in the BA matchup, believe it or not, in case Fire Lake is actually a danger to you. Um, so one of the things I kind of like about this is you always have access to it if you need it. And I think a lot of people don't really give this card credit in this current format. Um, it's definitely a powerhouse. Also, I probably shouldn't be discounting Pepe right now as a deck because it did top twice this last weekend. Um, but it's definitely... It's not super good in that matchup. Most of the time you'll just dump it with Aether. Um, but I think most of the spells here are definitely not terrible. I mean, the last spells, two Twin Twister, uh, it's kind of good if you can get it off against uh, BA if you go first and need to interrupt their plays. And then Rhoda, one for one. Uh, Rhoda's not super spicy, uh, but I don't think there's anything really better for it at the moment, um, sadly. I mean, yeah, you can play it in red layers and stuff like that, but definitely having search fodder is definitely not a bad idea. Um, traps 2 Prime, 2 Scolding. Uh, this card's a blow against Cosmo. Kind of sucks ass against uh, BA. Uh, against Pepe, once again, just kind of a blowout card. It's definitely not bad. I mean, still, 3 Prime might be good if you're going a little bit more recyclability. Uh, but definitely, I, I'm still in the air about it. Um, side deck, still the same as it was. One lad. I, I kind of want to drop this against BA and just kind of see what happens. Seems really trash, I know. But let me have my fun. One Mega Caius. I'm probably going to drop. Uh, one Fog King. I kind of want to play a second one of this. I mean, only the Monarch Mirror is just trash. Um, two Majesty's Fiend, probably going to end up maining one of these, no reason not to. Dark Hole Regeki, I'm definitely debating setting another Dark Hole. Uh, that's something up for discussion as well. Uh, but Dark Hole Regeki, definitely good. Uh, I pretty much board these in, uh, every game you can. Uh, Warning is good in the side. Uh, Rough Panel's trash, I don't know what I'm going to cut for this yet, I haven't decided. Um... It's up in the air. Maybe Battle Fader. Uh, it's definitely one of the things I was looking at from last format. Escalation seems pretty good if you can resolve it. Uh, it's always one of those cards. It's like, I always want to see it, but it never ends up happening the way you want it to. Uh, it's good if you get a Flood of Monarchs in your hand. Uh, but, the side though, uh, probably a few things that need to change. Um, I definitely want another Fog King, because uh, I ended up losing the mirror match at Locals. Uh, that's why I went 3-2. I also lost to BA, but, I mean, when you open up Triple Aether, or Double Erebus, uh, opening hand. Yeah. Life happens. So, what do you guys think about what we discussed in this video? Um, do you think I should consider the red layer engine? Uh, should I drop March? Should I play one cross, one Majesty Fiend in the main deck? I mean, I always have access to Majesty. Technically, I can search for it at will. Um, do you think that Valor should be switched with Maxi. Do you think Valor is still good though for stopping Terra Top? Tour Guide, obviously it's trash in your Cosmo matchup. Uh, it's not bad against Pepe if you Valor the Skull Corvette, but it's just being used as a prevention card, much like the intention it should have been. Um, if I play Maxi though, I don't have any access to draw into other cards to stop OTKs and things like that, unless I'm citing Battle Fighter. So, just the little things. Uh, but, Monarchs definitely have a lot of room for improvement this format. Uh, you can definitely take a page out of Patrick Hoban and uh, Billy Break. Uh, they're all testing that rank 5 engine Monarch deck. Um, and it definitely seems like they're having a good fun time with it. Um, I believe Billy played the proto... not Billy. Um, Hoban played the prototype uh, and made Overdrive go up. So definitely something that you should be Paying attention to is the Rank 5 Monarch deck with an extra deck. Um, outside of that, I still like this deck because it's very anti-meta, very, very preventative. It's just adjusting the relevant hand traps uh, for the current point in time for Providence and Columbus coming up this summer. So, let's see how that goes. So guys, leave a comment down below. Remember to check out Yu-Gi-Oh! Mint Forever After Collectibles. Um, check out their Kickstarter, which will be linked down below. Give me your guys' two cents on Monarchs. 
as well. I'd like to hear what you guys have to say. And well, I'm out guys. Peace.